In the previous two units, we talked about machine language in general, and from this unit onward, we're going to talk about the heck machine language, which is the, uh, uh, the native code that we are going to use in order to operate the heck computer. Now, I don't want to talk too much about the heck computer itself because we're going to, to spend the whole week, uh, or more than, than one week, talking about the computer, but I do want to give you an overview of the hardware platform on which the machine language is going to operate. As uh, Noam described before, uh, these two things, hardware design and uh, 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 machine language design, go hand in hand. And, and there's certain duality between them, and you have to know one in order to understand the other. So here's an overview of the computer that you're going to build uh, from next week uh, onward. In fact, you've, you've been building this computer all along, but uh, next week we're going to actually assemble all these pieces together, and we're going to have a computer which consists of three main elements. We're going to have, uh, basically, uh, first of all, we're going to have a 16-bit computer. And the 16-bit computer is a machine in which everything consists of chunks of 16 bits. So if you want to store something, you have to store 16 bits together. If you want to retrieve a piece of data, you have to retrieve 16 bits. If you want to move data from one place to another, you move them in chunks of 16 bits. So this is the atomic unit of information in this, uh, in this computer. Now, uh, the computer is going to consist of a data memory, which is a sequence of 16-bit values, and uh, each of these values is going to be stored in a memory register, and these registers are uh, uh, numbered uh, uh, for convenience. We can think about them as register 0, register 1, uh, all the way to as many registers as we have in the data memory. The instruction memory is a separate uh, memory space that is also a sequence of 16-bit uh, uh, values. And the CPU is a device which is capable of manipulating 16-bit uh, values using mostly the ALU which resides inside uh, the CPU. And finally, we're going to have all sorts of buses that enable us to move data from one place to another. So we have a, a data bus that uh, connects the CPU and the data memory. Uh, we have uh, uh, an instruction bus that uh, moves instructions from uh, the instruction memory to the CPU. And we're going to also have some address buses which uh, I didn't uh, put in the picture to avoid uh, uh, clutter. And also we don't need this level of detail for this uh, uh, particular unit. You can think about the buses as uh, highways of uh, 16 lanes moving uh, chunks of 16 bits from one place to another. All right, so um, how do we control this computer? Well, we have software. And uh, uh, the software is, uh, uh, in this level of, of, uh, of the machine, the software consists of machine language or the programs that we write using machine language. And when we designed this computer and when we designed this uh, 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 machine language, we decided to, uh, 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 to create two categories of instructions, which we call A instructions and C instructions. And each one of these instructions is specified as a 16-bit number, like everything else in this uh, machine. So what is a hack program? A hack program is essentially a sequence of uh, instructions, 16-bit numbers, written in the HEC, <coughs> I'm sorry, written in the HEC machine language. Uh, what about control? Well, before we talk about control, I have to introduce yet another element in this platform, which is called a reset button. So we do have a reset button, and here is how I cause this computer to do something useful for me. I write a program. The program is a set of 16-bit uh, numbers. I take these 16-bit uh, numbers and somehow put them into the ROM. We'll discuss later uh, how we actually do it. Then I press the reset button, and once I do this, the program starts running. Now that's, that's the basic uh, uh, um, sort of user instructions of how to, uh, to cause this uh, computer to do something useful. Now, I have no idea what, this, uh, what the computer will do. It all depends uh, on the program, you know, but uh, hopefully the computer will start uh, uh, sounding some uh, music or showing a, a video clip or uh, compute the average of a million numbers or something like this. It all depends on what is written um, uh, in the program. 
Now, before we go on to talk about the machine language, uh, I'd like to say a few, a few words about some more uh, harder artifacts that we have to be aware of. The HEC computer recognizes three registers. Uh, first of all, there's the D register, which holds a 16-bit value, which represents uh, a piece of data. Uh, then there is the A register, which holds also a 16-bit value, which represents either a data value or an address. We'll talk about this uh, uh, later on. And finally, there is something called the selected memory register, which is denoted by the letter M. So it doesn't matter if I have 2 billion memory registers. At any given point of time, only one of them is selected. And I can basically ignore all the other registers. They're, they're irrelevant for what I currently do. I want to focus only on the currently selected register, and I call uh, uh, this register M. You know, th this is just a, a convention that we use uh, in the specification of the HEC machine language. All right, so now we have all the basic uh, uh, background that we need in order to understand uh, the syntax of the language. So here's the syntax of the A instruction ampersand value or at value, uh, where value is either a non-negative uh, decimal constant or a symbol referring to such a constant, and we'll discuss these symbols uh, later on. Now, instead of spending too much time about uh, uh, the formal semantics, let's see an example. Uh, what does at 21 mean? Well, if I tell the computer at 21, two things happen. First of all, the A register is set to 21, and second of all, RAM of 21 becomes the selected RAM register. So we see that the A register has a very important side effect. Once you set uh, the A register to a particular value, like 21, it automatically selects a particular register from the data memory, and this register becomes uh, uh, the currently selected register, what I called M in the previous slide. All right, so this is the operation uh, of, uh, or that's, that's the semantics of the A instruction. Here's an example of how we actually uh, use this instruction. Let's say that we want to uh, uh, set uh, RAM 100 to minus 1. How do I do it? Well, the first thing that you have to do is select the register on which we want to operate, and we do it by saying at hundred. Once we do this, we get the side effect uh, uh, working, and then we can say m equals minus one, because m now denotes register number hundred in the uh, memory unit. So that's how, how we use the a, a instruction. We always need it bef before we operate on the memory. Before we do something to the memory, we have to select a register, so we always have to uh, uh, address the memory using an A instruction. And that's, by the way, why it's called A, A for addressing. The C instruction is the uh, workhorse of the language. That's where most of the action uh, takes place. And the syntax of this uh, instruction um, consists of three uh, different fields, which we call destination, computation, and a jump directive. Now, here is how it works. First of all, we compute something. And then we can do one of two things. We can either store the result of the computation in some destination, or we can use this computation to decide if we want to jump to some other instruction in the program. Now, this is the basic overall semantics of the C instruction. Now, let's get more uh, into the details of every one of these fields. The computation can be any one of the computations that we see here. So uh, we see here a set of uh, uh, what is sometimes called mnemonics, or symbols that represent some operation. So we can compute the values 0, 1, minus 1. Uh, uh, we can compute the current value of the D register. We can compute D minus 1, D plus A, uh, D end A, and end here is a 16-bit A, D 16-bit uh, OR A, and so on and so forth. And wherever you see uh, the mnemonic A, we can replace it also with a mnemonic M. So we can do many different things using the, uh, uh, the computation field. What about destination? Well, we have eight uh, possible destinations, beginning with 
uh, null, which means that we don't want to, uh, to store the results of the computation uh, at all. And um, we can store the result of the computation either in the currently selected uh, REM register or in the D register, or interestingly enough, we can store it simultaneously both in M and in D. This is something uh, which is actually quite powerful about the HEC uh, uh, machine language. We can simultaneously store the result of uh, computations in more than one uh, container. You know, we have eight different possibilities and uh, the programmer is free to use uh, any one of them according to what uh, he or she wants to do. Now, what about the jump directive? The jump directive uh, takes uh, a little while to, uh, to get used to, and here is how it works. We have eight possible conditions, and these conditions always apply, they always compare the result of the computation to zero. Okay? Uh, and once again, instead of belaboring about it, I'm going to, uh, uh, to give uh, some examples in just a few minutes, so this will become uh, uh, much clearer uh, once we see the examples. Uh, so let's say that I want to set the D register to minus one. Okay, set the D register to minus one. I look at the language specification and I see that I have minus one is, is one of the values that I can compute and D is one of the uh, uh, legible uh, destinations. So I can simply say D equals minus one. The jump directive is uh, optional, so I don't have to specify it. So, case closed. Let's move on to the next example. Let's say that I want to set REM uh, 300, register number 300, to the value of the D register minus one. Once again, I look at the language specification, and, uh, uh, but before I do so, actually, I have to select the register on which I want to operate. You know, whenever I want to access the memory, I must use an A instruction to select uh, uh, the register of interest, so I say at 300, and then I look at the specification and I see that I have uh, D minus one as one of the values that uh, uh, the CPU can uh, compute for me, and I have M as one of the uh, legible uh, destinations, so all I have to do is say M equals D minus one, and that is how I set register number 300 uh, to D minus one, as, as, and as you see, I need two instructions to carry out this particular operation. Whenever I do something to the memory, I first have to use an A instruction to select the register on which I want to operate. Okay, the last example deals with, uh, with a jump. You know, how do I tell the computer to jump to execute uh, a particular uh, instruction? Let's say that uh, uh, the condition that I want to use is that uh, if D minus one equals zero, jump to execute you know, the instruction which is located in uh, ROM 56. You know, this, is, this is similar to, uh, for example, uh, a condition that terminates a loop. You know, um, I do something in a loop and each time I check the value of D minus one and when it reaches zero, I want to jump to some other uh, instruction. So how do I do it? Well, once again, whenever I deal with a memory, the first thing that I have to do is use an A instruction to specify which register uh, I want to operate on. So I say at 56 to, uh, uh, to select the address uh, 56, and then I look at the language specification, I see that I have D minus one as well, one of the, the possible computations, and I also have a J eek, which means jump if the value of the computation equals zero. And that's exactly what I want to do, right? I want to jump if the value of D minus one equals zero. So I compute D minus one and I say J eek. So if the value of D minus one equals zero, jump. Instead of uh, equals, I could have used the greater than, less than, uh, uh, not equal, and so on. And notice, by the way, that I also have an unconditional jump. You know, if I simply want to jump to 56 without checking any condition, all I have to say is jump. And in fact, uh, uh, if I want to be more accurate, the, the syntax that uh, uh, we have in this language uh, requires that I say zero uh, semicolon jump. You know, this is just a convention. So if I want to do an unconditional jump, I do zero 
semicolon JMP, and this will cause an unconditional jump. By the way, everything that I say here is uh, uh, described uh, uh, fully uh, in the book and in the website, so you don't really have to remember any one of the details because you can uh, refer to them later on. So this has been uh, um, an overall description of the Hack uh, computer language, and uh, in the next unit, we're going to, to be more specific about this language because we're going to describe uh, two different flavors of this language. Uh, what we've seen so far was the symbolic flavor of the language, but we can also write all these instructions uh, using binary codes, and it's quite interesting to see uh, how these two flavors relate to each other. We'll do this in the next unit.